Uh, so process animalization, um, you know, traditionally performed, and I say traditionally, it hasn't even been performed that long, but mostly via femoral access. Um, and uh, I, I think femoral access is great. Uh, I also think radial access is great. I think you have to really choose your patients carefully. Um, I'll give a, kind of a few hints uh, throughout this talk as in terms of you know what equipment I use, even if it's not a radial equipment. Um, I actually think it's pretty easy to go up through ephemeral access, and I, I use a rut catheter to get into the uh, internal iliacs and, and uh, not into the prostate arteries. Uh, but I usually find that I can do almost anything with a rut catheter from, from the femoral. Um, but there are advantages to going radial. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of older men who have very tortuous arteries. This isn't like a uterine fibroid population. Um, and uh, Ari actually had put out a paper um, and gave some general criteria for um, kind of the anatomic considerations you want to consider for PAE. So you don't want to pick somebody who's too tall. Um, my limit is probably about 5'10", and I'll be honest with you, 5'10 pushes it sometimes. Um, I do all of my other work, my liver embolization, I do all of that radial, and I'll go up to six feet and they're fine. Um, but a 110 centimeter catheter, you know, reaches the celiac and SMA pretty okay, even on those people. Um, but you're really pushing it for prostate um, because as of right now, we're limited in the equipment that we have. Maybe in the future we might have longer microcatheters and it may help us out a lot. Um, so the advantages to radial, which was reviewed yesterday, uh, you get decreased radiation exposure to the operator, especially depending on how you position your patients. It's uh, increased comfort for the patients. I do a lot of patients where they've had femoral access and then I go to radial access and they swear that they would never want to go to femoral access again if they didn't have to. The minimal bed rest after the procedure and then they have fewer post-procedural restrictions. So as far as the radial equipment that, that I use, um, and uh, I don't, you know, what I'll say is I, I don't try to sell somebody on any product. I mean, I think you should be comfortable with what you use. Um, you know, I don't say that I use Trumo products because Trumo's paying me to be here. I use Trumo products because I like Trumo products, and, and maybe that's why they have me here. Um, but uh, what I start out with, I used to do a six French glide sheet slender, but then I switched to a five. Um, there is a little more room in between on the six French uh, for flushing the catheter, and I, I thought that maybe that might decrease the risk of thrombosis because you're actually able to flush the catheter. I did move to a five French now. Um, it seems to be a little bit better. Uh, I do use nitro, verapamil, and heparin. Uh, for nitro, I use 200 uh, micrograms, verapamil, two and a half uh, milligrams, and then 3,000 of heparin. Uh, just like Ari said yesterday, I tend not to re bolus somebody unless I'm actually a really, really long procedure, and then I may give them another couple thousand of heparin. Uh, Terumo has this um, 035 inch Baby J glide wire. Um, Ari was saying yesterday how he uses a glide wire and then it tends to select out a lot of the vessels on the way up the arm. Uh, the nice thing about this Baby J glide wire is it's a very tight J and you can get it all the way down to the arch and it doesn't select out anything. Uh, so it's a pretty atraumatic wire. Um, you also want to use a glide type wire. Going up with a non-glide might be a little difficult for various reasons. Um, anatomic reasons. Um, you need a five or a four French angled catheter, usually a vertebral type curve. Um, that's about 120 to 140 centimeters in length. 140 centimeters is probably pushing it a little too much because you don't have a lot of room for your microcatheter if you're dealing with a 150 centimeter system. Um, so I happen to like something that's about 130 centimeters. Um, I'll show a few cases here that are 125 and, and that kind of barely did the job. As far as microcatheters and microwires, uh, you need small size catheters. These are very small arteries. Um, 2.8 French catheters are probably not going to cut it for most people unless they have gigantic prostates that look like, you know, fibroid uteruses. Um, so my go-to catheters are, are usually a 2.4 prograde, or if these are very small arteries, and I know going off the bat it's a small prostate, then a, a 2.0 French uh, prograde alpha. Uh, which has only been available for now probably a couple of years. Um, the other thing is, you know, there was a poll yesterday. 
what's the best catheter for selecting prostate arteries? And I think 80% of people said uh, prograde. Well, there's a reason for that, because the prograde's a really good catheter. Um, but whatever you do use, um, just get used to it. Um, some people in here have a lot of experience with things, and some people don't. But um, you know, find something you like, you know how to use, and you know how to use it well. And that'd probably do uh, you know, more good than anything else. Um, there was a little misconception yesterday, I think, with uh, Charlie Nutting. He said that uh, you couldn't use a um, double angle GT through the newer 2.0 prograde alpha. Um, that used to be true. Um, I think Ari uh, had uh, corrected that a little bit yesterday. Um, they now make an 016 double angle GT. So you just have to make sure you use the 016 as opposed to the uh, 018. The other thing is that. Um, it doesn't accept all 016 wires, okay? So if you're gonna use something like a fathom wire, it's not gonna fit through this catheter. And the reason is, is because these hydrophilic wires actually expand a bit when they get wet. The 016 Glide GT has pretty minimal expansion on that wire, and it's pretty uniform. The uh, fathom wire, which I, I, I use um, sometimes for certain things, um, it's, and it's a good wire. The problem is it does expand more than the Glide GT, and it'll get stuck in the microcatheter, so you really can't use that. Um, but you might be able to use it for like 30 seconds, and then after that, it, it's pretty useless. Uh, I use a TR band radio compression device, and I work uh, with the left arm out at 90 degrees. So I work like this, and I work behind a lead shield. Um, there's a lot of, you know, Radial access has become very sexy lately, and there's a lot of people kind of pushing the envelope and doing different things. I don't do snuff box access. Um, I think, especially for prostates, you're going to be pretty hindered doing snuff box access because you need all the room that you can work with. And if you start going more and more distal, you're just going to run out of catheter room. Um, so uh, the reason why I work like this, and I'll show you, um, is uh, that here's one of my uh, ex-residents. He's uh, actually out at Dada right now doing a fellowship. Um, and then one of our technologists and our physicist, Matt. Um, and you can see how we position on the table um, so that this lead wall is right in front of the uh, receptor and also uh, the source. And you could theoretically do these cases without any lead on because you're just behind this lead wall. Um, Here's uh, kind of a more practical setup in the room. This is one of my old fellows. Um, and you can see how he's working behind the lead shield. Uh, he's completely shielded from radiation. So when I mean decreased radiation exposure to the operator, I mean zero radiation exposure to the operator. Um, the other nice thing in this picture, as you can see, is that we got this big monitor right in front of you. So it's, it's pretty convenient. You can see pretty well. You don't have to start magging up and doing digital zooms as much. Now, uh, here's kind of the whole room setup that we have. Um, this is my, one of my technologists that wasn't very happy with me taking the picture. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, fellow medical student, scrub tech, I think there's another medical student watching and scrub nurse. Um, can anyone guess what procedure we were doing here? There's a hint in there somewhere. Anyone? Nope. Nope. Port? <laughs> Yes, we're putting in uh, radial ports now. No, this is a therosphere treatment because we got the mat on the floor for any spill. Anyway. Um, so, uh, oh, uh, one thing I want to talk about here. Okay, so this is important. And if you're starting out in a prostate practice, um, you're going to have a lot of trial and error. I didn't have any of these kind of conferences to work on. Um, I had some SIR lectures that I would go through and, and study the anatomy and the lectures that they were giving. Um, this setup works great for liver embolization. Um, the problem here is you're working in obliquities most of the time for prostate embolization. So this lead wall is a big hindrance because you can't move your receptor. It'll start hitting the lead wall and you'll run out of room to work with. So you have to figure out another solution. So I didn't have any updated pictures, but um, this is all going to depend on your room setup. So I just happen to like to work this way because I can work right-handed. I can be behind a lead shield, and I can have the screen right in front of me. But 
for prostate, you're gonna have to figure something else out. So you're gonna either have to take this lead wall out and just use the plastic shield and then a skirt, um, and that's fine. Uh, or you're gonna, ooh, okay. Or you're gonna have to um, flip to the other side, work left hand, and just work on the other side of the arm. Um, but that also depends on if your monitors can swing to the other side. Um, you can go right radial, which I don't love to do. I you know, do it a few times, but I don't like to do it if I don't have to. Um, so you gotta kind of have to figure out your room setup because they're not all the same. I mean, this room um, uh, doesn't work as well. Uh, my other room, which is a, a, a floor mounted unit, works a little bit better for this. Um, so kind of do a mock up and just put some, you know, put, put one of the techs or medical students or residents on the table and kind of see how things are gonna fit.